Are you ready to succeed in the life, career, and business of your dream? Are you a visionary looking to start and grow your business, ministry, and career? Because it's time to be inspired to succeed. If you are looking for simple how-tos and actionable strategies to increasing productivity, your health, finance, and personal life, if you are a visionary and want to launch out in life and career or make your business stand out while fulfilling purpose, then it's time for Platform for Success with your host, Banga Omatayo. Amen. How to discover your true passion and profit from it. I chose this topic because when I looked at my life and the things I've been able to do, the little things I've been able to do, I found out that passion plays a vital role in it. We all live in a country where things are so, so on the high rise and, you know, fast paced. You go to work, you have to do a lot of things by yourself and you have dreams and passions, you have ambitions and you want to do things. Where do you find the time to do them? I discovered that because of passion, I've been able to do a lot of the things that I've done. And so, it may seem to be like a regular word that you hear every day. But to me, it means a lot. And I hope today I'll be able to share some of the things that passion has taught me. We all want to break out of the monotonous cycle. We want to maybe start a business. We want to write a book. You know, we want, to, want to, we want to be successful. We want to impact our generation. And we want to leave our mark in the sand of time. How do we do this? I tell you, without you being passionately pursuing that thing that God has placed inside of you, it's going to be a near impossibility. But by the grace of God, all dreams shall be possible in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I have a little disclaimer. When I say profitability today, I'm not just talking about you making money. When I talk about you using your passion and profiting from your passion, it goes beyond making money. You can be profitable in a lot of things. And so I want you to think as I'm going along in my slide, I want you to see profitability outside of money. You have to be able to define your own success. Someone's success cannot be your success. So my own success makes a lot of difference. And you have to have an understanding of what your own success is as well. Uh, can we see this slide? I'm not sure if we can see the screen. We cannot. I was assured that it's okay. Anyway, so you will learn how to differentiate between your passion and your interest. You will be able to find out the keyword that links all your aspirations, goals, and interests together, and you will be able to have clarity on where to focus your actions. Now, the question is, what is passion? Okay, that's better. So, what is passion? I went into the dictionary, and the etymology of the word passion is an intense force, a strong feeling or emotion, an object or devotions and the traits of being intensely emotional. So passion is a force. It's, it's, it drives something. And it's that which you find yourself constantly researching. You're, you're very vulnerable. You're not comfortable. It keeps pushing you. It keeps driving you. And you can't contain it. And you wonder, why am I always like this? Why am I always driven to this particular thing? It's because there is a power. There is a force behind it. And that is the force of passion. It's a strong feeling that we have. Now, I also found out in the Bible that the word passion was mentioned in Acts chapter 1 verse 3. And it says to whom he also showed himself alive after his passion. Here, him here is referring to Jesus Christ. We all know the story of Jesus Christ. We all know how Jesus Christ came purposefully for you and me to give his life so we can all be saved. So he also connotes suffering. That's the etymology of the word passion. So the, the point is when you're passionate about anything, 
it may drive you even to the point of you being willing to suffer for that thing. And that's the whole essence of what passion is. You have to see passion as being different from just an interest. When you begin to see that differentiation, then you would begin to know that passion is powerful. Now, it means pasio, which closely related to the Greek word, path, meaning to suffer. Now, when the word is applied to the mind, when the word suffering is applied to the mind, three things came out. To suffer, being controlled by the mind. To suffer, being controlled by the mind. So, passion in a way controls you. Passion in a way controls your mind. It pushes you. And there's nothing wrong in being pushed. There's nothing wrong in being passionate. What is wrong is being passionate about the wrong things. Amen. All right. So we're going to move forward to the next slide. Yeah, I said, when you are truly passionate, you are pushed along by your desire to the point where you are willing to endure pain, suffering, and loss. I spoke about Jesus Christ. Actually, there's actually a whole week, the passion, the, the, the passion week, which denotes the week that Jesus Christ was crucified. And that was why that, that week was named the Passion Week. In Luke chapter 5, verse 32, he said, I have not come for the righteous, but for sinners. So Jesus Christ has passion for lost souls. That is the passion of Jesus Christ. And in Luke 19 verse 10, he said, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So Jesus has passion. Everything that Jesus Christ did, he did from a place of passion. He went to the cross because he was passionate about it. He knew what would come after. And he was, so the body was light. Because that was his cross. And God has given him the force which would enable him to fulfill that which God has called him to do. That is what passion does. Apostle Paul, he has burden for lost souls as well. He said in Romans chapter 9 verse 2, he said, I have, I have great sorrow and uneasy anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, my kindred, according to the flesh. You see, he has an uneasy anguish. How can somebody be passionate and you're feeling pain about it? I want you to think for a moment. We use the word passion loosely. I want you to begin to think. Am I truly passionate about that thing? Because when you are truly passionate about a thing, you would know. And you can begin to use the life of Jesus Christ, like Apostle Paul, as an example. In the circular, Thomas A. Edison, we all know him. He discovered electricity, the bulb, electric bulb. When they asked him about all of his failures, he said, I have not failed. I have found 10,000 ways this won't work. You know, we say things that we hear, but when we bring it home and you think you're Thomas Edison, who has tried all his life just to achieve one thing, wasting money, wasting time, being abused, being made fun of 10,000 times, And he still stood and he said, I have not failed. That is passion. That is passion right there. You need to understand that our time is very short. Our time is fleeting. And so the passion you have is a gift for a purpose. And you have to be able to know what that purpose is. So you can use your passion in the right way. So you can make a headway and achieve that which we have been created to achieve. I pray that we would all achieve our purpose in Jesus' name. We all know Abraham, Abraham Lincoln. He was one of the best presidents we ever had in this country. 
he contested the state of the decisions and he failed. And one day, one time, because he never gave up, because he had the passion, and he became a president, and we speak of him today. That is the power of passion. Amen. I'm going to quickly speak about attributes of passion. The first one is passion is a neutral force. It can be positive, it can be negative. Jesus Christ used his passion to fulfill the purpose of him coming to the world. The people who did the same. So my question to you is, how are you using your passion and how would you use the passion that God has given to you? Apostle Paul spoke about people giving up their sinful passion, giving up to their sinful passion. That is an example of when someone is using their passion in a negative context. Amen. Now, the next attribute I want to speak about is that passion is a pointer to your blessings. Passion is a pointer. It leads, is a direction to where your blessing reside. God has blessings for each and every one of us. When you know what your passion is, then you found your blessings already. Because inside that place that your passion is leading you to lies the blessings of God. He said in Psalm 37, verse 4, he said, Take the light in the Lord, and it will give you the desires of your heart. He said, Delight in the Lord, it will give you everything you want. That thing that kept you waiting sleepless at night, that thing that refused to go away, and all your life it kept coming up, and you just don't know what to do with it. He said, if you delight in me, I will grant it to you. The desires of your heart is talking about your passion. God is talking to your passion right here. God is referring to your passion right here. He has given his word and he will bring it to pass. There is therefore no better place to start our plans other than from our godly passions and purpose. Now think about it this way. My son, Nehemiah, I know he loves cars a lot. He loves little cars and all that. What father would I be if I want to make him happy or I want to buy him a gift? And I know the things he loves to have. And I chose to go buy something that belongs to a little girl that I know he would never touch. Yes, that's the same way we should see our father. He said, I will grant you the desires of your heart. So your assignment should be to know what is that desire. I'm not talking about interest. I'm talking about what are the consuming passion, the forces that consume you, that makes you want to just do something, break out, make a difference, but you just can't put it together. That is passion right there. Hallelujah. Passion speaks to your childhood dreams. A childhood dreams matters to God. It does. I want you to go back to when you were young, when you were little, when you used to have those dreams, when society were not telling you it's not possible, when you don't know what failure is all about, when you just dream and you just imagine that this is possible. I want you to go back to your dreams. To your, to your, when you were young, because God speaks to little ones. In the book of Samuel chapter 3 verse 1, we saw how God spoke to Samuel. When God spoke to, it was with prophet Eli. The first time God spoke to him, he went to Eli. Eli said, I didn't call you. He went back. He did it the second time. He did it the third time. And at the third time, Eli said, when you hear that word again, just say, speak on. Your servant is listening. In verse 3, the Bible says, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. Those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. I don't know if you are here today. And all the word 
that God spoke to you. There was no one to tell you that that is the Lord speaking to you. That passion is from God. Maybe there were nobody to encourage you. I'm here to tell you today that God is going to revive those dreams and those passions in the name of Jesus. Maybe you thought that you heard God speaking to you in the still of the night, calling you to a certain type of life. And you were just wondering, I want to reassure you, because you are here today, by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus, those passions will be reignited in the name of Jesus. As God used somewhere to reveal his word, as God used, as God revealed his word to Samuel, I pray, may God send epas of destinies to help you revive those dreams in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My next slide. Passion holds the key. One of the keys to having understanding of what type of business to engage in or the type of career to pursue is to have clarity of your top passion. Because only in passion can you create a masterpiece. Only in passion can you discover a solution. Only in passion can you offer excellent product or service. Maybe discover a niche and get noticed in a crowded world. How many people have noticed that we live in a world that is so crowded? There's really nothing new under the sun. Whatever you are bringing out, someone has it. And so the society we live in does not respect ambiguity. They don't respect average. They give priorities to something that stands out. And you standing out as you come from a place of passion. Because when you ask people who are making a difference in their generation, they will tell you that they may be passionate about it, they may have the skills and the talents to do those things, but it didn't come easy to them. It still costs them a lot, preparation. Tonight is uh, the Super Bowl. You see those guys playing and doing all of those things. But I tell you, it comes at a place of preparation, a place of sacrifice, rigorous training, over and over and over again. So if you are here, and truly in your heart you belong to the iFlyer service, and you really want to be unique, and you really want to be profitable in your ways, and you really want to go through life and have impact, and leave something for the unborn generation, you have to begin to take that which God has placed inside of you and begin to take it and begin to work with it and begin to use it towards fulfilling the plan and the purpose of your creation. Come on, let's give God the praise in this house. Let's give God the praise in this house. Your passion will attract people, information, and ideas. If only we know, passion will bring everything. The first time they told me that when you're on the phone and someone is on the other side and you're smiling, that they can know. I thought it was a lie. People, people can get it. If someone can feel how you're reacting on the phone as a salesman, maybe you're cringing that he's going to say no. And they can perceive that and eventually said no. How much more? I want you to think about this. It is very important that your attitude, your attitude, the passion that you carry when it comes to the things that you do. Who knows? Maybe sometimes the doors we've been trying to knock has been the wrong one. Maybe we have not been aligning the passion to the things that God has called us to. Or maybe we're doing the things that God has called us to, but we're not using the right force to open that door. I pray that God will open our hearts to be able to understand all that God has deposited in us in fulfilling his plan and purpose for our life. In the name of Jesus. Passion, don't give up. When you're passionate, you don't know how to say no. When you're passionate about an ideal or an idea or a project or a ministry or a business or your kingdom service, you cannot say no. It just don't, it's not in his book vocabulary. Passion don't know how to say no. 
Now, for those who are working full time, maybe your profitability is in starting a business. I want to tell you, the only way you can start a successful business while you're working full time is if the passion is in it. Can you imagine going to work nine to five? You're coming back and when you should be chilling, resting. Now that's when you want to start planning for a business. The only thing that will make you to open your laptop, the only thing that will make you to use your break time to make business phone calls, the only thing that will make you to use your part of your vacation as a business session, the only thing that will make you to begin to wake up a little bit earlier and to sleep a little bit late is if passion is there. Because there are always contradictory, conflicting, you know, things that want to take that time. So passion is very, very important. If you love doing it, you will never give up doing it. And if you don't give up doing it, you will sure make it big. When challenges come, what keeps you going is passion. I pray today the grace to get clear on our top passion, to focus on it and be profitable. Let it rest on all of us in the name of Jesus. Passion is not purpose. Passion is not purpose. The purpose of God is the fulfillment of God's plan. Using us to do it. The purpose of God is the intention of God in our hearts. We've been created with our own purpose, with an assignment. It's not something someone is giving you. It's something that we came with. That is purpose. It's the reason for our existence. God has already placed it inside of us. So your interest and your passions for something or for some things, you are meant to use them as tools and vehicles in fulfilling that purpose. So passion is purpose. Passion is not purpose. Purpose is not passion. But passion is a tool in achieving the purpose of God in our lives. God will combine your gift and your passion to achieve all he has called us to do. When you look at the life of Moses, he's been chosen to lead the children of Israelites, was not born out of something he did while he was in the wilderness. He has, he has displayed a passion against injustices when he was younger, when he was privileged. The first time he saw two people arguing, he came in and he fought the other guy. And the second time, same thing happened. He was trying to fight an injustice. So you can tell that when God was looking for the right heart, the right mind, who can deliver his people, it readily came to mind because of the passion it carried. So your passion is not your purpose, but your passion is a tool, is this gateway to achieving the purpose of God for your life. Amen. For example, I have a purpose to inspire and motivate people towards, towards fulfilling, you know, purpose, you know, in life and in career. But my gift, my passion for events, for marketing, you know, empowering people, motivating people, those are the tools that I use in doing that. At this age of my life, I don't need anybody else to convince me otherwise that people around me know that I inspire them. People tell me, yes, mommy. people tell me all the time, you're, you know, I've done a lot of exercises over and over. What is one thing that stands out about me? People tell me, you're so inspiring. You always see the good side of things. You always motivate me. And that is the passion that I have. And when I do these things, nobody taught me. He just come. I just have the passion. I just love to make you feel good. That is the tool that God has given me to be able to fulfill whatever purpose he has created me for. Let's give God a praise. Passion is not interest. Passion is not interest. When you have interest for something, you do it at your convenience. You cannot inconvenience yourself because it's just an interest. 
you will do it because you're interested in it. But when you are passionate about it, you engage yourself in disciplined practices. You build yourself up, you train yourself, you educate yourself, you do research. You just want to know more about that which you're passionate about. So let us be able to differentiate between what we're interested in and what we're passionate about. This is very important because sometimes we may fall into the trap of going after interest when, should be, when we should be going after our passion. What we are interested about is something that a little shift, a little push, a little pressure, we will let it go. But if it's passion, you can let it go and it will continue to grow. It will continue to grow. It will continue to blossom. I pray that we would all blossom today in the name of Jesus. I have a, when I was in college, I love to play snooker. I shoot pool. I do it every day and I thought it's something I can't do without. But when I came into this country, I've never, I think I've played maybe one, once or twice. I even have a friend who lives on St. Max, a couple of blocks. He has it in the house, but I haven't been there. And I used to think that's something I'm passionate about. If it's my passion, or, or no, even if it lives 10, 10, 10 kilometers away, I will find it. So passion is different from our interest. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a praise. Passion is in action. Passion is in action. One of the litmus tests, one of the ways you can know if you're passionate about something or not, is you will see the evidences of it around you. You cannot claim to be passionate about something and you will not see it around you. It will just be around you. I mean, look at me. All the things that I said I'm passionate about, it, they're all around me. And so one of the ways you can know if truly this is something you're passionate about, you will see the fruits of it around you. Even without you even knowing, they're just, the clues are all over the place. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 21, the Bible says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So that's just an eternal truth of God. If our passion is in it, then we will see the fruit of it. Amen. So at this time, I want us to just say, take a look around you. Everybody, I want you to take a look around you. Not like, you know, <laughs> loot. I want you to think in your mind. <laughs> think in your mind. <laughs> I want you to begin to imagine the type of people that you gravitate towards. What are the type of people that excite you? You know, what are the type of events that you go to? What are the activities that you enjoy doing? Where do you spend your money when you look at your bank statement? What are the type of materials you invest your money in stocks? You know, is it in courses? Is it in vacation? Or is it in, you know, learning a particular skills? When you take a look around yourself and you see the things that you do with your resources, that is an indication of where your passion lies. And I don't want you to take it lightly. I want you to think and see where God is leading you. Amen. So just by doing that, you begin to see a pattern. You begin to see, wow, wow. So I never knew I'm this passionate about this thing. Now, we're going to do an exercise. Also, I want you to identify at least one person that you know is passionate about some things and make it a duty to tell them. Uh, Daddy told us something. He said something happened in his office, and this woman came. And everybody around her knew that she's passionate about something. But she didn't know. Even when they told her, I think you should start this, she was still arguing with people. And everybody knew that she's so good at this thing and she can be profitable at it. Until when they convinced her. So sometimes, what we are passionate about can be in our blind spot. Because we're so used to it, we may not even see it. So it may take someone to tell you. So I want you to do someone a favor. If you know someone who is passionate about something or some things or some ideas, please take the time to, to tell them. 
Because that little thing, that little thing may be all they need. That little information may be all that person needs, you know, to be all God has called them to be. Amen. The other thing I want you to do is I want you to ask people around you, friends and families, people that you respect, people that you trust. Ask them, what do you think I'm passionate about? What, what are the things that you think I love to do? Those people that knows you, friends and family, people that have known you for years, and they can tell you that I've seen this pattern consistently in your life. Amen. Are we going to do that? Awesome. Let's give God a praise. So, I have this little five-step process that we're going to go through. Through this, I'm going to show you how you can practically, maybe in career or in business, discover what truly is your passion. Step one, find the word linking your passion together. We're going to find the word that is linking your passion together. I want you to think deeply. I want you to be a little bit, you know, spiritual now. If you can close your eyes. I want you to think deeply about the things that you love and identify one or two words. There should be a noun word. Identify something that you think is central to your life and professional joining. For me, it was easy to say event. It was easy for me to say marketing. It was easy for me to say communication. Even when I came to this church and Pastor Antonia, I think that's our style. When you come to church, she wants to gauge your spiritual level. She will ask you to pray. Mommy told me to pray. I was blabbing like this in 2009. But then she didn't do it in a negative way. It was just for her to know where I am so she can help me to be where I need to be. Amen. Let's give, let's give a round of applause to God. And so now today I'm holding my microphone. Then I couldn't even pray for the new, uh, the new classes that we take when you first join the church, you know. So for me, even when I didn't have the ability to display these things, I knew that I had passion. Years ago, Minister Bimbola can testify. We did an event on networking and I taught on how to write your elevator pitch. And I said, I want to be a speaker. And people were making, they were laughing because then that wasn't the reality. But then you have to also speak into the future. You have to plan it. So your passion, no, you didn't, she didn't laugh at me. So I want you to think of one word or two that you think has been consistent in your life. For me, you can use me as an example. Marketing, for me, it was very easy because when I left college in 2000, I started a business. When everybody were looking for work, I started a marketing company and I studied philosophy. So in my mind, how did that happen? It doesn't add up. I studied philosophy. I went and started a promotional uh, company and I actually got a contract from a company called Wrangler. They sell clothing store, they sell clothes on Adenero, you know, in Lagos, somewhere in Lagos. So for me, it was easy to point to where I'm driven to. It was this same passion through the airport of my destiny airports when I wanted to leave Nigeria in 2005. I went into the UK to study marketing communications. It was this same passion that when I came into this country through the help of my destiny efforts, I hosted an event night of gospel lives and I've never looked back. When I host, thank you so much. When I'm in the peak of planning an event, I'll be saying to myself, I'm not going to do this again. It's too stressful. But the moment I'm done, before, before I'm done, I'm already working on another one. That is what passion does to you. So I want you to please quickly think of one word. Think of one or two words. I've used myself as an example. It can be sales and marketing, finance, education, design, sport, food, learning, fun, career, family, community, art, teaching, creativity, wealth. You know, think of something. There has to be something that jump out of at you. Amen. 
Now, when we've done that, we're going to move. Yeah, th those are examples of mind, event marketing, and communication. Now, write down yours. Now, you've written it down, then we move on to step two. I hope I'm not losing anyone. Please, I don't want to lose you. Now, you found one or two words that you think, this is my key word. This word is powerful, it's important to me. I can see it reflecting in everything I've done all my life. Now, I want you to identify action words. Action words like verbs that ends with I-N-G. Identify one or two of those. Think about it. That goes along with your action word. Let me use mine as an example. Here in my own example, I have um, planning, producing, teaching, mentoring, marketing. So for me, these are verb words. These are action words that, that denote the things that goes with my action word. I want you to do the same for yourself. You will see how everything comes together shortly. Then we move on to step three. In our step three, we're going to combine our verbs together with our keyword. And you see what we have. So for me, my keywords were events, were marketing. Now, when I identified some of my verb words, see what I have. Planning, events. Producing, event. Teaching business, mentoring people, marketing, consulting. So when you combine the keywords together with this verbs word, the doing words, you begin to see a pattern coming together. All I basically did was I combined my step one and my step two together. The words that I think are central to my career and my professional journey, and I combine them with some verb words that I think, you know, action words, doing words. We're going to move on to step four. Now, step four, we're going to add scripts that are descriptive to make the verb words more specific. We're going to add words that turn them into sentences, that when anybody hears them, it makes a lot of sense. Amen. So I want you to add your one and two together and also add some descriptions to them. Now, the descriptors could be who you like doing business with, what type of people they are, where do they live. It could be anything that adds more meaning to this first and second step. It could be who, it could be where, it could be when, it could be how, it could be why. You do the work. So when you begin to add descriptors to your step one and step two and step three, you begin to find sentences like this. See mine. See what I came up with. And we did it together. Producing events for faith leaders, corporate, and not-for-profit organization. All I basically did there was producing was my verb word, right? And the event was my keyword. I combined both of them together and I added a descriptor just for it to make sense. That's all I did. And I came up with a powerful sentence that gives me clarity on what I can do with my passion. Come on, let's give God a praise here. What I just did was to be able to use these keywords, combine them with some verb and descriptors, to come up with options of what I can do. The first one, I can decide now to produce events for a particular set of people, and they get, and I, I will get paid doing that. The second one, teaching business skills. I can decide to start hosting seminar, webinars, you know, to people just to teach them a particular skills, aspiring entrepreneurs and people who wants to start their business or even offering mentoring sessions. These are many more are options. If you take the time to go through this exercise, you will begin to see how you can actually use your keywords, things that you're passionate about, to begin to come up with powerful statements that will be profitable. Each of these statements represent potential area of business I can serve with either a product 
or a service or even a ministry. They're not just aligned with my passion, but interestingly, with my purpose as well. I have not only identified potential engagement, but an indication of where the purpose of God is leading me. Very, very powerful. So we're going to go to step five as I begin to, you know, bring everything together. And in my step five, I said, passion is not enough. Passion is not sufficient. You may be passionate about things, but that does not in itself lead to profitability. To become profitable, yes, we need passion, but passion alone cannot do it. We've identified our passion for those that followed me through the exercise. Now we know our passion. We've also been able to identify one or two keywords and turn them into sentences that we can build businesses around or we can decide to use in achieving a purpose. Now, to turn your passion into profitable venture, it must solve a specific problem. It must meet specific needs and fulfill a purpose. When you have a passion and your passion is able to solve a specific problem, and is able to meet a specific need that aligns to the plan and purpose of God for your life, you have a winning formula. And that is what we need to begin to think. As people of God, our focus is not just to make money. Our focus is not just to be rich. Our focus is not just to be the best stylist in town. We've been taught that whatever we do has to be a platform to glorify God. And the only way Hallelujah. And the only way we can do that is when we are able to channel this passion that God has given us as gifts in the direction where we can use it to identify people in the community who will listen. Because if you go to people with your passion alone, they will not listen to you. People don't buy passion. People will pay for what meets their need. We've been taught that many times and over. So our, our work, our assignment is to be able to use our passion. Why do you want to use your passion to be able to solve a problem? It's because your passion is that force that would help you, that would propel you, that would push you to be the best in what you do. Because without you being the best in what you do, you will not be respected. You will not be recognized. And people will not pay you premium for what you carry. And you will even struggle to do it. So you have to begin to see the picture of you being able to combine all of these elements together. Because like I said earlier, passion is a gift that God has given us to be able to do all of these things. Amen. Now, to turn your passion into profitable venture, it must also connect with purpose. Life is very short. How would you live a life, and at the end of the day, when we get to God, are we going to tell God that all we did was we made six-figure salaries, we, we, you know, we were the best uh, director in our companies, when God is daily loading us with things we should do for his kingdom and is aligning our part with opportunities, with the giftings, with the elements, with the ideas, with the passion that we need to do those things? Are we going to tell God that? No. So, because when you look at our nine to five, most of us here, you find out that most of our life, most of our adult life, most of our productive life is used at working for someone. And that's where the danger lies. We cannot go through life and that will be all. They are good. We have to. We have to. But also, we also have to begin to turn our passion to profitable ventures in a way that connects to the purpose of our creation. Each of the statements in step four are not just aligned with my own passion, but interestingly with my purpose. This is a zone where our lives become profitable and fulfilling because 
We're not just going to work to make money and pay bills. We're rather functioning in passion towards fulfilling the purpose of our lives. It's good to be in, you may be working, but you should begin to think, how can I reposition myself? If after you find out what you think is your top passion, you're not there right now in terms of your nine to five, you should begin to see either you will change your department. You can still, still stay in the company and change your department just so your, your passion can best be maximized. You don't want to go to work the most of your life and you go grudgingly. When I first started working with Con Edison, I was with the uh, central engineering. My background is not in engineering. I see young guys when they stand up to talk, they know their stuff because they are engineers all their life. They know their stuff. And I sit there and I just say to myself, ah, I wish this is a marketing strategy session where I can also say the things that I know. And that is what we don't want to do to ourselves. Because you have to see this passion that you carry like a seed, like a mustard seed, how they describe faith. The more you deploy it, the more powerful it becomes. Amen. Let's give God the praise. Let's give God the praise. Let's give God the praise. When you start a business or a ministry or create a product that is driven by your top passion and impacts a specific set of people towards fulfilling a godly cause, you have a winning formula. And that is what we should be thinking about. I'm going to quickly speak about some action items, things that we should do on a day-to-day basis. If truly we found out what our passions are or is, and we want to move it to the next level, these are the things we should begin to do. First, we should develop our passion by reading and learning more about it. Because the more you learn about it, the better you get. The better you become. It becomes to turn into skills. You, be, you, be, you, you begin to become like a luminary, a go-to person, an authority. You know, when it comes to that particular topic, and people will begin to pay you premium. If truly you are passionate about some things, if truly you find out what your passion is, then you have to develop yourself daily through reading and learning. Number two, practice your passion by doing it. You have to practice it because the more you practice, the better you get at doing it. The more you practice, the better you get at doing it. But if you have it and you keep it there and you're not playing around with it, it gets rusty. So I want you to begin to think, what is it that I truly carry? What is it that people are telling me that I can do better than most people? That is what you should begin to think. And don't, that's fine. People may make fun of you. It's okay. People will make fun of you, whether you like it or not. And that's just the truth. But you know what you know. You know what you have. This morning, I saw a little video of one brother. He's frying a puff puff. This guy has gotten an award on national TVs. We know him. He, he has his uh, food truck in front of the Nigerian consulate. That guy is passionate. He's passionate with what he does. That is the place where we can be celebrated. I have a colleague at work, another gentleman. He spent 46 years with Con Edison. When he was leaving, you know what he did? All the plaques they gave him, he didn't take it. And I'm like, how do you justify the years? 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, all those plaques, he refused to take them. And that's all he has to show. Of course, he probably makes money. But it's not so much about money. What about the purpose of your creation? What about the purpose of why we exist? And so it is very important that you just have to begin to do something, begin to practice it, begin to work in it. And when you begin to work in it, when you begin to work with it, you begin to connect with people who are in the same sphere like you. 
You begin to see mentors. You begin to see, you know, people like your peers, people who have the same or like mind passion, maybe through networking events. You begin to share information. You begin to share ideas. Then your network begins to grow. And your network begins to grow. But we cannot sit down as eye flyers. We have to show passion. All the comedians go on social media. You see them. Hundreds of thousands of followers and they are making money. They're flying first class. What have they done? They only discover the passion. And they're pursuing that passion. The thing with your passion is whether money comes or not, you love it. So it doesn't, it's not even about money. You are enjoying your life every day till Jesus comes. That's the beautiful thing about passion. You are not laboring. And that's why it's important that we find ourselves in that zone. Amen. You also need to move in the direction of your passion. And you also need to share your passion. Justin Bieber, you know, he shared his passion. He posted his video on YouTube. And today is, is an household name. The rest is history. You have a powerful tool in your hand, your phones. What are you doing with it? If it's something that you can use to deploy your passion, you should do it. You should do it. We have social media. There's a lot of opportunities with technology that we have right now that we can leverage on in fulfilling the callings and the passion of God for our life. Now, as I begin to round up, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Fulfilling and profitable work is that which integrates our talents, our passions. And given the amount of time we spend working, our work should be our best gift to God. Our work should be our best gift to humanity. And our work should be our best gift to our generation. We don't want to go through life and not have evidence of what we've done with all of the giftings and the blessings that God has blessed us with. I want you to stand up with me this, this afternoon. And I want you to stand up with me as we begin to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray this afternoon. I want you to begin to open up your heart to God. All the things that you had wanted to do, now you came into this country, things become so hard. I want you to open up your heart. Our God is a God of possibility. Our God can do all things. He can make all things possible. I want you to pray to God that God should open up your heart. If you truly want to get clear on your passion for a purposeful and profitable living, I want you to begin to speak to God that he should give you the grace to identify what he has given you passion for. God has given you passion for something to share with his word and it is part of your purpose. If God has laid anything in your heart, you don't want to leave this earth without doing it. Our objective should be to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want us to begin to pray that God should open up our hearts. All of the dreams of the yesteryears, when you were two, three, four, five, six, seven years that have been buried in the sand of disappointment, that God should open up your heart this afternoon, that God should let you see what passion has it given you for a specific purpose. And I don't know what passion of yours is laying dormant. Whether you decide to revolutionize your job or launch a new career, start a business, start a ministry, whatever it is, I want you to pray this afternoon that the power of God will locate each and every one of you and every passion he has blessed you with in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to bring our prayer to closure. Father, Lord, we thank you this afternoon. We bless you. You are an awesome God. Thank you for opening our heart to hear your word, to know what we need to know in this present day and time. Father, we give you all the glory. Blessed be your name in the name of Jesus. And if you are here today, if you want to know 
what your passion is, you want God to speak to your heart. It starts with you knowing this God, the King of glory, the beginning and the end, the half and the omega. If you're here today, you don't know God. You don't know Christ. You've never given your life to him. I want you to raise up your hand. You're not coming. 